Grace be with you and peace from God our Father and our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. The text I have chosen for this Labor Day weekend is in the 10th chapter of St. Paul's first letter to the Corinthians, where we read, Whatever you do, do all to the glory of God. That's the text. Dear friends of Jesus, I'm sure you have all seen the wood carvings up in Hughley Auditorium, which were given to us from our Savior Lutheran Church here in Detroit. Uh, there are 30 people uh, depicted in 19 different exhibits, and among them we have the parents and a secretary and a mechanic, a construction worker, a nurse, a physician, a farmer, a carpenter, a musician, a soldier, a firefighter, a draftsman, a tailor, a policeman, a butcher, a scientist, and a teacher. But have you ever noticed the theme? Whatever you do, do all to the glory of God. Let's look at that. How do we do that? And how does that really result in a job with benefits? Work for many is bad. It's the conclusion of author, historian, radio host, uh, Studs Terkel some years ago in Chicago. He interviewed a steel worker, a, a receptionist, a factory worker, a truck driver, a bank official, and a waitress, and concluded work's bad. Uh, nobody liked it. And uh, unless one finds some satisfaction and pride in what one is doing, uh, they don't like it. Uh, as one said, we're looking for a calling, not a job. I can relate to that. Uh, when I was younger, uh, I was helping my uncle on the farm uh, put up hay, and I got the job of building the stack. And uh, hay comes down on you and all that, and you build the stack. And uh, uh, by the end of the day, it was uh, the stickers were so bad that I had to throw away the uh, overalls that I was wearing. Uh, but at least I, I could see the, the stack I had built, but uh, uh, the, the work was detestable. Uh, but it's necessary sometimes, we have to work. Uh, we need the money. Uh, again, I, I relate to that, I needed money often at school, and uh, so uh, for several summers I would uh, take, uh, work in the pea harvest out in Illinois, uh, 18, 21 hours a day sometimes, but made a lot of money in a few weeks, uh, so I could go back to the seminary in the fall. Uh, some people have to work uh, to put food on the table, to pay bills, to pay back somebody that they owe, uh, pay a debt, uh, uh, all that. Uh, it's necessary. But there's a danger when you work just for money. Uh, the Bible says the love of money is the root of all evil. I, I remember in Flint, uh, high school graduates would head to the shops, Buick and the others, uh, uh, because the wages were really quite good, and, and they forfeited in the process possibility of going to college and maybe uh, later having other choices of, of what they would do in their lives. Uh, but the money looked good. Uh, in the book, uh, a while back, The Day American Told the Truth, uh, they surveyed people and found out that for $10 million, one out of 15 people would kill somebody. And uh, one out of four would leave their spouse, give up their faith, their morals. Pretty dangerous stuff. And then uh, Time Magazine, uh, back a few years, uh, surveyed, I don't know who they surveyed, but workers, and uh, found that people that work just for the paycheck waste a lot of time, a couple hours a day sometimes, and uh, uh, that for money they give about uh, one in four really, really knocks themselves out to do a good job. Uh, uh, some drink on the job, uh, do drugs, uh, we know that, and uh, about half the people are willing to call in sick when they're not really sick. Uh, at Buick, I recall, uh, the uh, workers uh, frequently uh, did stuff at, at work uh, for themselves, and they even uh, made things for themselves sometimes. They called it government work, uh, and uh, so they'd sneak stuff out of that uh, as a result. Uh, that, you know, the danger 
of, of, of working just to get something uh, is not really good. Because you and I, uh, we, we've been raised by God in Christ to a new level. We're new people in Jesus Christ. And, and, and uh, God wanted us to be people who work. Uh, that's what Adam and Eve were supposed to do. That was before they fell into sin. Uh, they were to take care of the Garden of Eden. Uh, and in heaven, we're told we're going to work. Uh, we're going to serve God night and day in his temple. But it's going to be enjoyable. It's going to be rewarding. Because work in itself is not bad. It, it depends on why. You know, uh, remember the, the pretty well-known passage by grace are you saved through faith, that not of yourselves, uh, lest anyone should boast. That we're, we're saved by faith uh, and not of works. For we are his work, it goes on, for we are his workmanship created in Christ Jesus for good works, which God before ordained that we should walk in them. Now think about that for a minute. Before eternity, God not only chose you, to be his child through Jesus Christ, but he had in mind something that he expected you to do for him. So we, we should be thinking, I wonder what God wants me to be doing uh, because he chose me for that purpose. Because we are to serve, we are to do things to the glory of God. Uh, in the uh, story, Isaac, Bashevis Singer uh, wrote a story, The uh, washworm, uh, Washerwoman. Uh, he tells about his family. His mother uh, gave the laundry to an old Polish woman uh, who would then do the wash for them, bring it back. And uh, uh, once uh, during the winter, uh, for a couple of months, she didn't show up, uh, bring the laundry back. And uh, they thought, well, maybe she died. And uh, then later, all of a sudden she showed up, she looked like a ghost, and, and she had been deathly ill. They had even done the last rites for her. Uh, but she said, I, I couldn't die. The wash kept me alive. She, she had to get that wash back. Can you imagine? Her job kept her alive because it was so important to her. And if you and I grasp this idea that, that we are here to serve the Lord in what we're doing, We'll have that same determination, that, that same sense of, 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 of obligation. We want to serve our Lord. As, as Colossians says, whatever you do, work heartily as for the Lord and not just for people. Because that's what we have been chosen for. That's who we are now. We're Christians. We live different than the people out there just grubbing around for work, money. We're different. We've been lifted to a new life. Uh, uh, back in the Civil War, there was a soldier named Roswell McIntyre. Uh, he was a deserter, and he was uh, sentenced to be hanged as a result, and was pardoned by Lincoln. It so moved him that he went back into the service and became a very loyal uh, soldier uh, and, and when he was killed uh, in an action at... Uh, Five Forts, Virginia, uh, the, the, the pardon note was still in his pocket. Uh, that was meant that much to him. And, and so you and I, because we've been pardoned, we've been forgiven, uh, we have a, a, a yearning to now live for the Lord, to be for them. Remember, the Son of Man came not to be served, but to serve and to give his life a ransom for many. And that's what he did. And he suffered and died on the cross. He rose again from the dead in order that we might be redeemed from uh, just this, this life of drudgery uh, to a whole new life redeemed, not with gold or silver, but with his holy precious blood and with his innocent suffering and death, that I may be his own and serve him. That's why he did this, that we might serve him, that we might do things to the glory of God. And we know that, that then as we live this out by daily contrition and repentance, this old selfish nature dies and, and a new person emerges every morning, a, a new person who lives before God in righteousness and purity forever and because of, of what God in Christ has done for you and me. 
if you've read the, uh, the letter to Philemon, that little, little epistle in the New Testament, uh, you, you see a beautiful example of what, what happens. Uh, Paul was a prisoner in Rome, and, and a runaway slave uh, gets to him in Rome uh, by the name of Onesimus, and uh, uh, in the process, as he's with Paul, he becomes a Christian. And so now Paul writes to his former owner, uh, his owner, Philemon, uh, and he pleads with him to take back Onesimus, uh, the slave that had run away, take him back, not as a slave, but as a brother, because he's been transformed into a whole different person. And that's what happens to you and to me, and that's why we can have our job with such benefit. I take with a grain of salt when people are interviewed and they tell about their careers and they said they, they enjoyed every minute of it. Uh, I, I, I can't see them jumping out of bed every morning, rushing to get to work. Uh, I take that with a grain of salt. Uh, but uh, it is true that uh, we can uh, be, uh, appreciate our, our jobs and, and take the satisfaction from them. Uh, 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 Eric Sloan, in Reader's Digest some years ago, uh, told about a, a fellow named Rob Golding, who came to him, a, a very, very elderly man, uh, who was really an executive, and he, he said, I, I'd like to put in a garden for you. And, and so Sloan agreed, okay, you want to do it. And the, the guy showed up early the next morning, worked hard two days, he even built a little fence around, beautiful, beautiful little garden, got it all ready and go and then someone wanted to pay him. And he said, no. He said, when, when you take money for work, it's work. But when you don't, it becomes a pleasure. Well, there, there's something to that. Uh, uh, back at the American Pickers a few weeks ago, uh, uh, there was a guy they were trying to buy a, a Volkswagen bus and a Carmen Ghia from. And, and the fellow said that, that he was a physician and that he had been in the Air Force Reserve. And, and there were times when, when he was uh, placed overseas. And he said he was able to, to practice medicine and help people. And he said it was a privilege. Can you imagine being in the service overseas? It's a privilege. And, and then uh, you, you read maybe about those, those chefs in Baltimore. Uh, there was a former customer a woman dying up in Vermont who, who, who wanted a, a dinner of, of tempera broccoli, whatever that is, and, and uh, they, 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 they drove from Baltimore up into Vermont, uh, prepared the dinner for her, and, and then somebody wanted to pay them, and they said no. It was an honor. See, that, that, that idea, that, that's the way we can look at things. A whole new way of looking at life, at our work, at our tasks, at whatever we have to do, whatever that may be. I used to ask our confirmation class kids to go home one evening and uh, whatever they had to do, whatever chore they had to do at home, uh, uh, remember that you're doing it to the glory of God. Try, try to remember that. Well, now, if they were honest and actually did it and they told me that, but they would tell me, yeah, it made a little difference. Made a little difference carrying out the garbage for God. Made a little difference doing the dishes for God. Friends, that's what we're doing. We're serving God. What greater benefit could you have? Amen. And may the peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. Amen.